want to connect up the dual focused resistivity sound and do a quick calibration. Uh, the dual focused resistivity sound is a Geohista Pro that measures resistivity. Uh, as you can see here, we have A0, which is a central electrode, A1, which is the larger electrodes on either side, and then you have A2, which is a smaller electrode on either end of the probe. At the top of the probe, you have the resistivity bridle, which the GeoVista one is five meters. Then you have the bridle electrode, which is this here. And then you have your cable head and your logging cable. Okay, so just a quick setup on, a, on the desk here so that you can see how things are connected. This is the resistivity test box. It has a, various different connectors here and you have a little dial that goes up various resistivities so you can do the calibration. So what I'm going to do, it's clearly labelled at the top here, I'm going to connect each one very quickly with these crocodile clips. Okay, so I'll start off with A2. You can connect to either A2, they're both connected internally. A2 is here. The next one will be A1, which is the big one in front of me. One. A0 is the central one. This is where your measurement, measurement current comes out of. A0. Then you have the bridle. Which is the bridle electrode here on the, on the bridle. The last one here will go on the armor, which is your cable head or your logging cable. So it's hard to see, but that's everything connected to your DLL3. And then you will go through each of the resistivities to continue with the software. Okay, that's it on how to physically test it. Physically, we have the tool, the dual focused resistivity connected with the calibration jig. This tool is connected to the wireline cable. And now I'm going to see connect the GUS to logger. You can see here the logger is offline. So if I just connect it, you can see immediately that we have connection here. So it's reading the depth, the speed, and the tension from the logger. So if this is the first uh, calibration for this tool, you need to tell the software that you have you own this tool. So if we go to edit, my sons. And in this new window, you look for the probe that you're going to calibrate. In this case, the dual focus resistivity sound. You put in the serial number, 7045 in this case, and add to my sounds. Here you can see these are all the sounds that you own. At the bottom here is our, is our sound. Now, if you are supplied or if you have a calibration, you can save it into the C drive. So it'll be local disk folder GeoVista data calibration, and you save it here. If you haven't got a calibration, the software will notice that there's no calibration and it'll create a file immediately. Okay. If I close now, now I need to go to my select stack, edit. Now I want to create a stack basically tell the song what I'm doing. So if I add a new stack, I call it whatever I want. In this case, I'll call it DLL374 7045, except you can see it appear here. I can then go into this window here and select dual focused resistivity sound, select the serial number of the probe I want to calibrate, save changes, close. Here again, I'll choose the sound I want to uh, power up and then accept. This jumps to the diagnostic screen. You can see we have red packets because there's no power or communication with the probe yet. The channels that we have with this probe are is the short focus resistivity, the deep focus resistivity, and the voltage and current. So what I'm going to do now, with everything connected, I'm going to power up here on this button, it's on power. You can see you have voltage and current, 96 volts, 70 milliamps. 
and then you can see we also have green packets. So now to continue the calibration, if we click on this calibration box, a pop-up window will appear. This is your calibration form. You can see all the channels that you can calibrate on the left, short and deep resistor, which is what we're interested in. And you can uh, then select. So for example, we'll select a short, we'll go to calibration type. There's a number of different calibration types. You can choose to do a two point, a three point or a four point. On the jig, you have five different points that you can calibrate on. If you run in formations which have low resistivity, it's ideal to calibrate over the shorter or the smaller resistivities. If you run in general formations with very high resistivity, I would suggest you do a two or three point calibration over the higher ranges. In this case today, we're going to do uh, a three point calibration. And when you select three point, you have your three windows here, calibrated value and wall value. Calibrated value, we can choose. What we're going to do is we're going to do a calibration 10, 100, and 1K ohm. 10, 100, 1000. Okay, and these are our world values here. On the left here, you have acquisition length. When the calibration is done, uh, it measures a certain number of samples and then averages them. So it gives you the option of measuring 10, 50, 100, 200, or 600 samples. Standard is 50 samples. It'll average a 50 sample selection from the data. So if there was no calibration before, here you'll be reading raw values coming from the tool. Okay. Now we're going to calibrate the first value, which is 10. I will physically put 10 onto my jig and then click start count. It'll measure 50 samples, average, and display what the raw value is here. I will then physically change on the jig to 100. You can see the values increased here. This is the raw values. Then I'll click start count. It'll measure 50 samples, take an average, and present here. Finally, I'm going to put the jig to 1000. You will see here it increase and then I will calibrate the thousand. Once this is done, I click on Calculate Coefficients. Our calibration coefficients and equation will appear here with the coefficients and it will present a, a graph. I must at this point save channel calibration. If I don't save the channel calibration, you will lose the calibration. When you click on Save Channel Calibration, it will update the calibration file. Then I will also do it again for the deep, the same exactly. Three point calibration. Change it to 100, start. Check to 1000, start. Calculate coefficients, save channel calibration, close. Now you can see here we're still reading raw data. You have to select the stack again so that you prompt the software to read the new calibration. So if I go here, click on the stack I want to do, accept, and now you can see we're reading a thousand. If I change it on the test jig to a hundred, you can see it is a hundred. Ten, you can see it reading ten. That is a simple check to see if your tool is working and it's calibrated.